host, Patricia Wade Goings, broadcasting from WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network. Today, we are honored to have Mrs. Barbara Mike with us as our guest. Let me tell you a little bit about WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network. We are a nonprofit network, and we share stories of real people telling stories of inspiration and encouragement to one another across the globe. We surely invite you to make your charitable donation that helps us keep this mission of hope going. Again, I say welcome to you, Mrs. Mike, to a place called through. Thank you. Mrs. Mike is going to join us today, and she's going to tell us, When Love Hurts, Dementia, Who Am I? Mrs. Mike, for our listening and viewer audience, would you just share a little bit about you, and then we'll get more into your topic of dementia and when love hurts. Okay, good morning all, and or afternoon, rather. Um, my name is Barbara Gaston Mike, and I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. My husband's name is Clifford Mike. And we've been here for the last 35, maybe 36 years in Philadelphia. Uh, we're both um, government employees that are retired people that had made some specific plans for our retirement when we uh, leave work. We talked about what we were going to do, that we were going to travel. We were going to spend some time with our grandchildren, and we were going to just enjoy the latter years. But as it turned out, it didn't happen that way. We were uh, away for um, a family birthday, my brother-in-law, when the onset of the dementia came. And um, it was quite upsetting because it was something that we did not know about. Mm -hmm. He did, but, but I didn't. Uh, it was um, happening from around 2007, which was kept between he and his doctor with the patient doctor patient confidentiality, confidentiality. Mm -hmm. even though i'm the wife i was not made aware of that until certain instances happened mm -hmm. where i uh had to accompany him to his trips to see his psychiatrist then i was uh made known about how long it had been happening so um it was things, when I look back now, in hindsight, I see things that happened that I just attributed to aging. So I, I would say, oh, well, we're both getting older, so he's forgetting some things I forget. Little did I know it was the inset of the dementia that far back, and I was not aware of it. So, so as I was interrupt you right there because I also noted in the study that dementia itself is not a disease, but it's more of a syndrome. Yes. And then it progresses into Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. So it's just and it's so rapid. And I couldn't uh, I'm still trying to grip it sometimes mm -hmm. because of how it happened, how fast it happens. As I was saying, um, we went to the brother-in-law's uh, birthday celebration, and for some reason, my daughter drove us, but we were all outside. It was a very nice day. It was in August, so it was warm. We were at the, the Naval in, uh, Recreation Center in Maryland, and uh, somehow he got to the car, and he just left. Mm -hmm. My son saw him, but he didn't, you know, he think nothing. He thought nothing of it because, oh, he's probably going to go to the store and come right back. That went into a real uh, 
a thing where we had to call the police to find him. There was an alert place to find him. He was missing for seven hours. But that's part of the dementia because it does that, affect the memory loss. The memory loss. He got in the car and he was going and he had no idea where. He was just driving. Mm. So when the alert went out, um, fortunately, God saw this man found him because he had heard the alert. And he stayed with him until the police was able to go and get him from this uh, convenience store he had stopped at. Wow. With, with that being said, from then on, it was constantly down, down, down. And our story from when I was a, a young girl, they lived near us. Okay. I know his family. He knows my family. We all know each other. So because y'all lived in South Carolina. In South Carolina, time. yes. So um, I used to always say that I was going to kiss him when I got older. <laughs> and. I was telling my cousin that, and she still reminds me of that now. She said, mm -hmm. well, you really did, didn't you? Yes, you did. <laughs> so it was sort of, sort of a love story. And yeah. it happened when we, when we got married, and everybody was saying, wow, I never thought that would happen. We had a good life, and things were good with us until mm -hmm. the disease started to regress, just got worse. Every time something happened it was a little bit a little bit more challenging bit for you challenging, yes yes because it yeah. also affects the psychological yes part of him as well the motor skills as well yes he would um do things like sometimes like you would think a child would do when they revert you know when a child is maybe four or okay. five when they want to explore mm -hmm. he would turn water on and let it run he would turn all the lights on in the house. And things that he would normally not do, he was doing. Uh, once my daughter and I went, to, uh, I went to Bible study. And when I came home, we saw lights everywhere from the garage all the way upstairs, every, the entire house. He had every light was on in the house. And when I opened the door from the garage to come upstairs, I smelled gas. And uh, he had turned the gas, the stove on, and it wasn't lit, and he smelled gas all through the house. So things like that, those are the danger zones. Mm -hmm. And you don't know when these things are, hap are gonna happen. Because you can't, there's no warning. If there's no warning. But once you know, you must be extra careful mm -hmm. because you don't know from day to day what's going to happen. So what are some of the precautions, um, Mrs. Mike, that you have now had to take um, because of his diagnosis? And well, for one thing, when, when it first happened and it was hard to get him to go to the doctor, but it, he developed a relationship with the doctor that he was seeing and I called the doctor, and every time he had to go see him, they would um, ask me to accompany him. Mm -hmm. And there were times when he would, um, he would go, and he would be very nice, and it looked as if nothing was wrong. And then when I explained to the doctor what was going on, then he said, wow, you can't, um, you can't leave him alone. Mm -hmm and you're going to have to bring him here so that was going to be a challenge to get him to come so prayerfully we did get him to go one saturday i told him that his doctor had called and said he must meet him at the emergency room mm -hmm. so i did get him to go so we went and the doctor said well mr mike said we have to look and see what's going on. We think there's something going on with you that we want to check. And we're going to put you in the hospital for a few days. So that being said, he went. And at the end of his stay, he was supposed to, you know, telling him he was. That he would have to stay. That he would 
he would be coming home. He thought that just a few days he would be coming home. Mm -hmm. And when he didn't come home, he, he tried to go. He tried to leave the hospital. And luckily, they, there are guards there. So they saw him and they were able to apprehend him before he could get out. And from that day, that's when he became a permanent resident of nursing home. And so at that time when you had to leave him there, I'm sure that must have been something that you were not prepared for. I was not. Or physically. I and was you not. Say that you were pretty much elementary, high school sweethearts from the start. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so that time of separation, I'm sure that you had a strong family support system there with you. Yes, to I help did. You venture through that process. And so it is my understanding that he now does stay in a facility. Yes, yes. And I'm able to see him as many times as I'd like per week. So there are times when I bring him home, his birthday, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or any day that I would, you know, want to just give him a break and bring him home. He must be constantly watched when I bring him home. Okay. I must have someone here with me. Uh, luckily, my son lives here. I have a son lives here. And whenever I bring him home, my son always help me get him to help me with him because he, he uses a walker. He's able to walk, but he uses a walker. And we have steps. So it's very hard. He can go up the steps, but, you know, just coming in and we leave him on the bottom floor always because... We don't want, you know, have, you know, to be in he might fall. So he's physically uh, stronger. He's strong strength wise. Physically, he's, he's, he's very able. He works out on the machines there at, at the nursing home. He takes walks inside. And when it's warm in the summertime, I take him outside. He's not one that would, would run. There are some of them that will, you can't let them outside because they want to run away. He, he will stay with you if you take him out. He will stay with you. And then they're, they're, they get very agitated at times. And they don't, want, they, don't want to, they don't want to talk. They don't want you to touch them. And it gets like, um, they get angry very easily. So you have to be very, very careful. When we back up a little treatment. bit and talk about his memory. The memory, he can remember. My sister and he, went, they were classmates. He remembers her. She's one of the only people other than me that he remembers by name. When he sees her, he said, oh, that's Lucille. That's wonderful. That's because wonderful. they were like from so far back. That's how the memory goes. Way back, if I speak of something that happened when we were kids, or at least 10 to 15 years, 20 years back, he's able to talk with me about it. I can ask him, do you remember Robert? from 40 years ago and he he says yes i remember him he used to live wherever amazing but amazing. if i say something to him oh cliff today is wednesday january 29th and two minutes after that i said what did i just just tell you he said what i don't know Amazing. So he remembers the he past. He remembers the past. Not present situation. No present, no current situations. So how does that, the similarity in dementia and Alzheimer's kind of coincide? Well, one sort of goes into the other. Actually, you get dementia first and it, then it's like regress, you know, into Alzheimer's. Into Alzheimer's. Yes. And like when it gets there sometimes, there is no memory. There are, uh, in, in when they have Alzheimer's, it might be a situation where he might forget me. There, there are people that I've seen there where the person has forgotten the wife, the children, the grandchildren, 
people closest to them. Closest to them. And I'm understanding from dementia, and there's about seven or eight different stages to yes. having dementia. Yes. As you said previously, it progresses into a challenging, a more challenging. More place. challenging each time. Because one day I might go to see him and he's talking. He's saying, oh, hi. How you doing? He said, I said, I'm good. How are you? Okay. And then he'll, uh, he'll stare. He's staring. He's talking to me, but he's staring straight ahead. He's in a fixed stare. Like he's really trying to like process. He, he's, like I'm kind of. But he always knows who I am. The minute I walk in, he'll say, oh, that's my wife. That's Barbara. He, he knows me. Great. And I'm, I'm thankful to God for that. Yes. He still knows who I am because there have been a lot of changes with me. I'm not a well person. I have a very bad back condition where I wear a pain pump and sometimes it's difficult for me to walk. I could not drive when he got ill, and since he's been ill, I have to, I'm driving. And so it's not only just the emotional side for you yes. that has been affected, it's also the physical side. Physical so with side. the aid of your family, your son, yes. and your daughters, um, thank God that they're there to help you as well, um, because yes. you need someone to help you too. Yes, I have... Uh, church members, if uh, sometimes they, um, they said, Mrs. Mike, you're here a lot. Maybe you need to take a break. So I have church sisters that will go visit him if I'm gone. They will go and visit him on the days that I visit him. So he's always in contact with somebody. My, my deacons from my church go every month and they commune him. They give him Holy Communion every month. And a lot of them visit him. And there are other um, family members that visit him. That's and there are friends, loads of friends that visit him. And, and some he still reacts to knowing these other people outside of the young Well, nation. sometimes the facials, he, he'll remember the faces. And he'll respond, oh, hi, how are you? <laughs> but he can't bring the names. The names will sometime not. I'll always have to say, do you, I'll ask him, do you know who this is? He said, yeah, yeah, I know him. But he can't say the name because the name has escaped him. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But family members, when I show him, I show him pictures often of family members, grandchildren, his family, my family, I'll show, I'll say, well, do you remember this person? Do you remember that person? I'll, and he'll say, oh, yeah, I know that person. But I can tell if he knows the person by his reaction. I can react to it. Okay. But he might not be able to say the name, but he'll say, oh, oh. That means I know who that is, but I, the name is gone from me. And it's amazing, at least that he still remembers, you know, like you said, things from the past, but unfortunately, yes. he can't bring himself up um, to the future. And I know that dementia, as it, you know, continues in this deterioration state, yes, you know, things will continually change, unfortunately, because I don't believe that there is a cure for dementia, but we do oh. know the higher powers, who yes. is a healer. So yes. we just trust and believe in him for the healing. Um, would you share with us kind of like where he is in what state of this disease he is at this point? Well, right now he's like, I think he's like, um, you say he's more in a mild decline. In, yeah. Like he's, he's, there are people that are very fussy and screamy, you know, and like, but Thank he's goodness. not, he's very, He's calm most of the time. Sometimes he gets aggravated and he, departure makes him act different. Okay. Like he'll be fine with me. And then when I say I'm leaving, uh, I said, well, it's time now. I have to go. It's getting dark. I want to go before it's dark. And he'll say, 
okay, go, go. <laughs> Sometimes you'll get that tone. And then okay. other times he'll be very nice. He'll say, okay, yeah, you go before it gets too dark. I don't want you out too dark. And then there are other times he'll say, oh, yeah, let me get my coat because, yeah, we got to go before it's too dark. He's always under the impression that I'm going to take him. Especially after he's been here for a visit. And I go the next time I go visit him, he'll always say, oh, yeah, let me get my coat because we got to go, right? Amazing because he's actually trying to process still that, um, okay, I know I belong here. I right. At least that I belong here. And so that goes back to what we opened up with dementia, who am I, and your love story. Yes. Uh, how over the years your love affair has not come up to who am I. Um, yes. And that is the bad part about dementia um, that people just sometimes don't really remember who they are, where they are. Where they are. Um, that's just the side effects of having that disease. Um, and I do know that, as I said, that it does progress into other areas. Um, yes. And we're just so glad that at least you are able to have communication with him. Mm -hmm. What kind of treatments does he take for his dementia at this point since he is in a Well, facility? at this point, he's not um, respiratone is a medication that keeps them calm. Other than that, there is no, uh, there was a memory uh, loss medication they were giving him long before he went to the nursing home. But maybe that's why he could stay home as long as he did. But it's not working now. It, whatever you know good it was doing it's not now it's it's just like he's just taking um uh, regular things that he's been taking you know uh thyroid medication he takes that's because he's been taking that forever the uh, thyroid medication well, but no other problem. than that he's not on a lot of medication it's just that he it it the, the disease itself, I guess they don't know what to do with it. There are no uh, cures, you know, that they know of. I've heard, you know, they're working on certain things to do this, and but as far as I know, there's well, nothing. There's no cure known no cure at this point. At so this point. knowing that, what would you say, what would be your encouraging words to someone else that may be going through a similar situation as yours because love does hurt and having dementia and not knowing who you are and where you are we're sure that's a horrendous but we want to we're almost out of time unfortunately mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you would share with us how you would encourage someone else um that may be going through and others that are here viewing your story give us that inspirational message if you would well the first thing you do is pray because yeah. prayer does, that's your calmer. Yes. And look for things. Uh, just be, be the wife that you were or the girlfriend or the mother or the sister or the brother that you've been all along. Don't let them forget how much you love them. Visit them. Hug them. Kiss them when you see them. Because sometimes you hug them and they look at you like, wow, you're touching me? You know, because if they don't remember you. So keep keep the love. Mm -hmm. Keep, uh, like reading, he, used, he loved reading and, and he doesn't read anymore because he can't retain what he reads. Retain. So he gets, he can't read anymore. He just, he might look at a paper or look at a book and then he puts it away. He might look at the pictures, but other than that, you know, you just have to keep with them, keep in touch with them. Don't leave them where they, uh, they say absence makes the heart grow fond and not in the dementia case, it doesn't. The more you are there with those people, the better it is. Stay and let them know who they are. Tell them things, even if they don't 
know what you're talking about, tell them anyway. You know, share with them. Don't let them, you know, do things special. Go when you go take them something. You know, um, they do a lot of activities at the place where my husband is. Be there for the activities. They're having a Valentine um, uh, party. They always do their sweetheart things for the married ones. I never miss any of those. I never miss the Thanksgiving or the Christmas dinner they have there. Even though I bring him home, I still attend the ones they have at the home. Well, that's Anything, just... any activity that they have, they have bingo, they have karaoke, they do a lot of things. They sometimes take them out to eat or they might order out. They do things outside, they have cookouts in the summer. So those they things- so actively engaged. Yeah, you stay engaged with them, stay close to them and let them, because the more they see you, the less likely that you're gonna fade away from their memory. Because a lot of people bring them and then they don't have anybody- They don't look back. To come see them, they don't look back. And mm -hmm. they forget everything that way. Well, Ms. Lamont, unfortunately, we're running yes, out of time. we're running out, okay. But I wanna thank but, you for being our guest today yes. on A Place Called Through, broadcasting from WYTV seven Christian Broadcasters Network. And we thank you for being who you are and staying strong in spite of. Again, we know that love does hurt and dementia causes to wonder who are you and where are you? But yes. we do thank you and we will continue to pray for you and all will continue to go upward and not downward. And as the word of God says in our departing to you today, God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and yes. in God in him. Stay strong in the Lord. God loves you. We love you. And to our viewers and to our listeners, if you'd like to be our guest on WYTV Christian Broadcasting Network, A Place Called Through, I am Patricia Goings, the host. Please feel free to reach out to me at area code 843-608-9744. You may follow me on my Facebook page, A Place Called Through at Willpower, The Call to Rise Above. You may also contact me via email at pgoingswp at gmail.com. The way we are, the way we were, and the way we'll always be. Love does hurt. God bless you and best wishes to you and Clifford. Thanks for being our guest again. Thank you. And 